Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I want to present to you an amazing interview I did with Tim Cohn, basically the Phil Jackson of the Philippines, a coach who's won a ridiculous amount of uh, titles running the triangle offense in the Philippines League. And definitely it's all coaching gold, no matter what level you're coaching on, you have to listen to what he says. You might not be able to see me because of technical difficulties, but that's okay because I want you to focus on what he is saying the whole time anyway. And if you want to hear the whole thing as a podcast, make sure to click on the link below or on the screen and you can hear the whole thing because I'm telling you right now, it's a fantastic interview with lots of insights into how to run an offense, whether it's a triangle or not. So sit back and relax and enjoy the conversation. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I am extremely proud to have Tim Cohn, uh, sometimes known as the Phil Jackson of the Philippines, who <laughs> is the head coach of the Pure Foods Hot Shots formerly known as the San Mig Coffee Mixers. I, you got to love the names over in the Philippines. Coach, thanks for coming on the show. And uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is the triangle offense coach uh, that, that I certainly look up to as much as possible whenever I can uh, and, and has won uh, countless uh, titles using it. Coach, talk to us a little bit about it. How did you come upon the triangle offense to begin with? Uh, before I start, I should say that... Uh... Uh, you, you introduced me to Phil Jackson of the Philippines. I was with Eric Spolster this summer, and he introduced me to Phil Jackson, actually, who was standing behind us as the Phil Jackson of the Philippines, and I just about died. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he, you know, I've met him actually a couple of times, uh, you know, through text, a common friend of ours. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of... There's a, kind of an urban legend that I, I learned the triangle um, the, through, you know, looking at a, a grainy, grainy, grainy videos that we stole from uh, uh, the military bases here in the Philippines and, and the U.S. military bases. And in, in a way, it was true. We did do that. I mean, we got the Betamax tapes, the old Betamax, and we broke down and we copied them from the, those because we didn't have NBA games here on our regular stations. So we had to kind of steal them through uh, through the uh, military base, the Subic and Clark here, and we just I just broke it down. I was in 1990. Uh, I was searching for an offense. You know, I was running motion and I ran sets, and nothing seemed right. Uh, you know, we were very defensive oriented, but we just you know we had one star player in our team, and it was like uh, him and the 11 little Indians. You know, we just basically. He, got the ball to him every time down the floor. And then all of a sudden, you know, we started noticing the Bulls were coming out and running this new system with Phil Jackson at that time. And uh, it, it was like an epiphany. It was like a, a light bulb going off in my head. And I said, I want to learn that. And so uh, I started recording them, and then I started breaking them down, figuring out, you know, the, the two paths to the post, uh, you know, the two paths to the top, you know, the four passes in the offense. And from there, uh, I started teaching them. Uh, bad news was is that I started teaching and as I started to learn and uh, it was not a good combination. Uh, young coaches out there, you don't teach what you don't know. Uh, it's a bad combination and it was bad for us in the beginning, but we persevered and, uh, and it turned out real well for us in the, in the end. At what point did you get a uh, Texas book from the 60s? I'm assuming that at one point you must have gotten it and went through the diagrams. Did, did, was that uh, an influence on your teaching? I have to admit, absolutely not. I don't think you can read Texas book and figure out what's going on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that is one complex book. Um, it's, a, it's a tough book. I mean, if you want to learn a triangle, that's not where you learn it from. Uh, uh, what you want to learn from that book and you know, is how to coach, how to put a practice together, um, you know the, the you know how to handle players. I mean, it's a beautiful book in terms of philosophy. Just that the actual diagrams are very hard to understand if you've never really been touched by the triangle at all. Uh, even now, I've been running it for you know 20, 21 years now. Nineteen ninety three was when I started uh, full bore and. Uh, so 21 years now, and, and even now I look at Texas book, and I got it right here on my, on my I can see it from where I'm sitting, um, and I still have a hard time making heads or tails of it at times. 
You know, it's so, funny because I kind of forget that as well. When I, when I first got it and we committed to putting it in, I had grown up in Chicago going to all the games. So I had this sort of inherent understanding of it just by having watched them run it so much. But, um, you know, you're right. There is that sort of terrifying, uh, you know, it, it, this is really kind of complicated. It, it, I look back at it now, it, it's easy to follow, but I think you're right. What I ended up doing was the experience of actually getting on the court and coaching it uh, really, you know, catches you up a lot quicker in theory. Um, we, I'm just kind of curious, when you're installing the triangle offense, uh, are, you, are you a whole method, part method? How does that work when you first want to put it in? Well, um, you know, it's an interesting thing about our league is that we have, you know, we have imports, American guys that come in. Um, and they vary. You know, we, we, we play three different tournaments a year. And, you know, the first tournament is all Filipino. The second tournament, we bring in a guy that's usually oversized, like 6'10", 6'9". Uh, and uh, then th the third tournament, we bring in a guy that's like 6'5", or 6'4". And um, so these guys come in, and we've got to turn around and teach them the triangle in a real hurry. They come in like uh, two weeks before the, the actual season. And then we got to turn around and teach them. So, you know, we've had that experience of having to teach, you know, over the 21 years doing that. I mean, literally every year having to bring in a, a new guy. And this import, he's your Michael Jordan. I mean, you you build everything around him. So it's really in, 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 integral that he understands what's going on. So, uh, you know, we've been able to, through the years, develop certain techniques to try to break it down in a hurry. And, um, and one of the first things we do, we start off three on three and we do the strong side triangle and then we add in, then we do the, the weak side triangle off the two pass, what we call the two pass, the three pass. Uh, Tex calls it the two pass to the top or the two pass uh, to the weak side wing or the back doorstep, that's what he calls it. But we, we break it down that way and then we, we move it into a five on five. But the, the difficulty in the triangle is that you have to remember, Every player has to be able to run in every position of the triangle. So you could be the top, the post, the weak side wing, corner, or the strong side wing. And uh, um, he has to learn it from all those situations. So you have to do a lot of whole method in terms of five on five. We have what we call a scramble drill. Where we just, you know, half court, we just scramble guys up and then we just say, you know, we throw the ball out, one guy goes and tracks it down, the other four scramble into position, and they have to run the triangle from there. Um, we do it without defense, and then we do it with defense. Uh, I actually showed that to, uh, to Tex Winter when he came to uh, our practice in, uh, in 2000. Uh, what was it, 1999 or 2000? He came to our practices and spent a week, a week and a half with us. And... Uh, which was the highlight of my life, was having text at, at our practices for a week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anyone who hasn't been in his presence, there's just a, um, I mean, I remember I picked him up from his house in, in Oregon and drove him to the coast to, to do an interview. I got like an hour both ways in the car with him. And it was just, a, it, it's just, I, it's hard to describe, but there's, it's just knowledge of basketball just sort of seeping into the air. <laughs> and, you no bet. What you you reeks. Was, You're right. Yeah. You're right. You reeks of knowledge. It's just a, uh, it's just an amazing thing. It can be a little intimidating in the beginning, but then you realize what a wonderful man he is and gentleman he is. I mean, uh, you know, he took a coach like me. I'm a little podunk coach from the Philippines, and you know, and, and actually took me under his wing, and and uh, you know, he brought me to Laker practices. You know, we talked, uh, you know, once a month at least, and while I was in Manila, and he was traveling, you know, on, in, in with the Lakers. Uh, um, you know, he just adopted me, and, and you know, and again, I'm just a little podunk coach from the, from the Philippines. So, you know, what a generous, unbelievable man he is, and he's just so generous with his knowledge. Well, you know, uh, I think it's interesting is that the connection between how generous he is and how generous the offense is, and what the principles of the offense are, sort of reflect who he is in a way, which I thought was really interesting. And I think that's what Phil Jackson also responded to. I don't know about you, but when I coached. Like, I never had to tell a kid, you, you can't ever shoot unless you're wide open in the basket. And you, you don't shoot it unless you're, you know, within five feet. You know, it's always sort of sorted itself out on its own in a way that I know as a player, I never would have been that, that player who wanted to hear from my coach that I couldn't do something on the court with the ball. Exactly. And, and that's a huge, huge point you're making. 
uh, about text and about the offense. Uh, and uh, I, I, that, that's why I believe, and I think number one, uh, what I've always felt about the triangle is it's, it's the number one developer of players I've ever seen, number one offense in terms of developing players. Uh, it develops players because everybody's touching the ball. You know, right now it's gotten to be so much, you know, uh, screens up high and screens on the wing. And, you know, uh, there's so much two-man game that the other two or three guys are standing on the side. The dribble drive motion, I, I don't want to kick down any other offenses. You know, I, I think there's a lot of great systems out there. And uh, But, you know, having a guy sit in the corner, um, in my, if I may you know, my son was playing uh, high school basketball, and uh, their team was running dribble drive, and uh, uh, they had him as a shooter in the corner. And it just, you know, they, that's basically what he did. He sat in the corner waiting for passes all, all, all day long, and, and he didn't really get the chance to develop his game. And I always thought that was um, one of the faults of, of a dribble drive offense or some of the other offenses. The triangle really develops. Uh, players and all their skills, especially big men. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. Like, if, you know, most coaches aren't big men. It just for some reason, especially when you look in the NBA, there's not that many. And and I was never. I'm, obviously, I'm a guard. But what I recognized immediately was if you just watch a big man play in the NBA, for instance, it's got to be the most boring job you can have, <laughs> right? You just run from block oh, to block, so and and people are hitting you the whole time. So the notion of being able to get on the weak side and go pinch post, maybe even fly out to the wing every once in a while, uh, just to keep it fresh, you know, to me was, was something that was really revolutionary. And, and, and it shouldn't be that way because, you know, I, I, people, other coaches, you know, would probably have a conniption when they see, you know, the center go out to the wing and catch the ball there. I certainly remember when the Bulls were putting it in and Horace Grant had to learn how to catch the ball in the wing. It, it's startling that a, a, a guy who played four years in college coming into the NBA really had no perimeter ball skills at 6'9", 6'10", back in 1987 when he got in the league. It's crazy to think of it now. Yeah, it is. And uh, I think it's gotten worse that way, especially in the NBA. And and uh, it's getting that way. And what I understand, I'm not involved in as much, but even the lower levels, AAU basketball, you know, the, the bigs are being left behind because it's gotten to be such a guard-driven uh, offense, a point guard-driven offense. And uh, uh, a lot of NBA teams now are saying, if you don't have a great point guard, you know, you, you're not going to uh, to achieve, and um, and I just don't buy into that. And uh, uh, maybe because I've been a triangle guy all my all my time, but you know, it's it's great to watch big man develop. And you know, I'm not a big man's coach by any means. Also, I'm a card, but you know, our big men develop strictly because of the system. Are we always all the big men want to come and join our team because? they can see they're going to get a chance to develop, and uh, it's, it's quite satisfying. 